Hi guys, JP here from Biz Video and really excited to talk with Greg Kite from Keatham Homes today. Uh, Keatham Homes specialises in second dwellings, custom small homes and granny flats. And Greg, really excited and big thank you for chatting this morning. Uh, what you do is quite unique compared to a lot of the other builders that we help. So thank you very much. No worries. Um, I thought maybe to kick things off, give us a bit of a background to Keatham. Uh, what sort of stuff, I mean, I gave a very brief just sort of sentence there, but tell us a bit more sure. from your side. Uh, we started, um, our inception was in about 2006, if okay. I recall correctly. Yeah. Um, and we went into the, I guess you would call it the standard building market, meaning we were building um, uh, your four bed double lockups. Yeah. Um, it was a, it's a, it's a very, very, you know, almost saturated market, I'd say. Mm -hmm. A lot of people doing the same thing, uh, unless you've got something quite unique or, you know, the likes of, um, you know, something um, something different to everybody else, you're competing with a lot of the big boys that have, yeah. you know, got it pretty well sorted out, if I, if I you know, if I say so. Yeah. Uh, so we found that we were floating around looking for a different, uh, looking for a different market yeah. um, and spent a lot of years doing that, in fact, and okay. at the same time, branching out while the mining boom was on and I spent yeah. a little bit of time in a in a corporate job yeah. you know, working as a construction manager and you know, a, f a few things like that yeah coming out of that when I stepped back in and you know got back into the uh, into the flow of Keaton yeah Keaton homes uh, again we were sort of uh, we were sort of I, I call it I call it chasing different rabbits meaning right. Somebody had come to me and say they wanted to build a duplex, so yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd follow that. And then there'd be some, you know, some um, architectural homes, so I'd, I'd, I'd sort of I'd go and do that. And, yeah. um, then there'd be a, you know, decks and pergolas, and I'd, I'd sort of follow mm. that. And I found it difficult to really get a flow and to create a system yeah. because I was I was chasing all these bunnies around, you know. Yeah. Then um, uh, three or four years ago, we found that there seemed to be this trend. Where I was, regardless of what I was doing, whether it was a new home or or a, a, a client inquiry, I found a lot of people were asking for some form of independent living or second dwelling, yeah. whether that was actually a garage conversion or building up, or a, a granny flat yeah. or, or something like that, or even we built a new home that had had a separate um, a separate uh, dwelling attached to it in, yeah, the, in yeah. the original building approval. And I found a lot of this was going on. Um, so with a couple of other things heading towards that direction, namely an aging population, uh, um, housing affordability, yeah. uh, teenagers having trouble, yeah. Um, yeah, disability support, I felt there were a lot of reasons that, that this would be beneficial to specialise in mm. this area of the mm. market. So I wanted to um, I wanted to find a way to to, to target that type of uh, clientele yeah. and um, and uh, gear my business and set it up and sort of educate myself a little yeah. bit on the rules and you know get that infrastructure worked yeah. out and set up my business so I could I could target that yeah. um, I could target that that corner yeah. of the market. Did and, it take uh, a long time to? Because you said you, you started noticing that consistency coming up with the projects. Hmm. How long did that take? Because I know some guys, for forever almost, they, they're chasing all the rabbits. How long did it take for you to, to start noticing, okay, I'm chasing rabbits, and here's a potential niche? Sure. Um, so as I mentioned, yeah. floating around between yeah. the news, uh, then like my little corporate job in, a, in yeah. early to, uh, the early teens, 2010 yeah. to 2014 or something like that, then coming out of that, I floated around for two or three years, yeah. and that's when I was starting to identify that there was this, uh, I guess, organic inquiry for the for the second mm -hmm. dwellings. So it was probably probably back in about 2015, 16 that yeah. I, I started to come up with the concept of listen, I need to I need to focus on this. Mm. Um, I need to 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 um, build a uh, my business around following that, and yeah. that's when I started to aim for it. After that. Yeah, you know, nice. so it started off by you know creating a couple of uh, a couple of plans, for example, yeah. and you know a, a few things like that that I could start to um, I could start to uh, offer to clients, yeah. and then after that I just needed to market it properly. Right. And uh, if we go prior to us even, because I remember when we first started chatting, um, but say prior to that, what were some of the ways that you were going out there? Because once you pick a niche, it's then like, okay, well, how do I go and get the attention of just this niche? Mm. 
how are you doing that? How are you? Yeah, that was tough. That okay. was um, that was uh, a lot of it was word of mouth. Right. Um, so it started off, and when I was talking to the people that I had done that uh, that I had done those previous jobs for, mm -hmm. I found that yes, we were getting that word of mouth, but it wasn't really what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it was a little bit like what I mentioned earlier, a garage conversion where or a or a build-up extension or yeah. something like that. Whereas what I really wanted to focus on and what I really saw a, a market for, probably more so because I would be able to create the business systems for it, yeah. was to actually focus on standalone second dwellings. Yeah. So I, um, the inquiry, like I said, was coming in via word of mouth, yeah. um, maybe the odd little you know Facebook post that we did ourselves or something yeah. like that. But I found it to be a little bit sporadic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we were getting lucky enough to get an inquiry to mm -hmm. do exactly what we'd want. Yeah. But more often than not, it was it was not quite there. And yeah. I felt I was still sort of, even though I was getting closer to that that niche, mm -hmm. I found I was still sort of chasing these little rabbits that weren't weren't quite what I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then, what was it like when you when you're talking to someone that was ideal? Um, how was that building that relationship? Did that take time, or what was that? Yeah, well, like I say, because a lot of it came from um, um, referral. Yeah, it made it a little bit easier okay. because I had somebody that was, you know, was doing our work for yeah. us effectively. You know, that was, it was telling us that we, you know, we did a good job mm -hmm. on theirs. Um, but it was a bit of a. It was more of a. You know, if I got that job, mm. it felt like it was a little bit out of my control, meaning I was just getting lucky, yeah. which which is great. I mean, don't get me wrong mm. when, you, when you win a job like that, but it's, 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 difficult, to, it's difficult to plan your business yeah. around getting lucky. Yeah. It's, it was, I, I really wanted to somehow get a system where I was able to, to um, start to get a bit of an idea and create some historical data and, and, yeah. and, and get our inquiries coming in that was, that was up to us, yeah. you know, that yeah. wasn't just sort of, you know, yeah. getting, getting lucky and wasn't just relying yeah. on somebody else you know, yeah. spruiking our name. Because I know as well, um, when we first started chatting, you were kind of busy trying to move away from a particular relationship that was sort of feeding your work. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. So in those days, as well as that, I was, um, I, um, that, that's, that's a story in itself. Yeah. When I, was, um, when I was starting to have this idea of wanting to work with, yeah. uh, with second dwellings and granny flats, I, I happened to be having coffee with a friend. Yeah. And, and, um, and she said to me, you should talk to my friend because she's an architect and she, she wants to do something similar to what you're doing. Yeah. So we sort of established a relationship, mm. whereas um, she was designing the, the buildings, um, selling them to a, a client, and I'd come in with that. I'd come in to be the builder for mm -hmm. that particular project, yeah. which was okay. Yeah. Uh, but I found that I, I was sort of governed by what she was doing, right. so I wasn't really in control of how much we were selling or not selling. And yeah. I found that you know it, it was yeah we, we were working. Yeah. It was all right, but I I, I felt like I. I Again, felt not like in control of not yeah exactly not in control. I yeah. mean, it was it, I was I was reliant on her mm. and her system mm. to be able to generate that work, and that's that wasn't what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, okay, and then if we look at the, uh, I mean, we started chatting, and I feel like it was an easy conversation from day one. Mm. You were very open, which made it easy um, just to chat and, and understand. Mm. Um, some people, I think if they've been sold to in the past, they're very reluctant to have a conversation because mm. they think this can be sold to. But with you, it was just quite easy. You, were, you had a bit of understanding of, to marketing. You've been doing some business development mm. and, and education. So we could chat about things nice and openly. Mm. Um, what was it that first got your attention of us? How well, did you come across us? Um, good question. I don't know. Um, probably much like a lot of the social media stuff, when I started to show an interest in some business development, mm -hmm. um, I probably got uh, some you know, biz video pop up on my social media feeds, yeah. my personal social media feeds. Yeah. Interesting what you say, though, about being open when we first talked because um, business development and business coaching is what I was doing because I was identifying the need for me to sort yeah. of improve my... my um, 
uh, what would you call it, business skills. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been building for, you know, I've been in the building industry since the early 90s. I yeah. you know, can you know, build you anything you like. But as far as sort of knowing the ins and outs of my financials and you know uh, the you know, the accounting systems and you know, taxation, I, mm. I, I and I, I found and even my own leadership and uh, recruitment and a few yeah. th- other these these other things that are related to business, um, notwithstanding marketing, which I'm yeah. sure we'll get to. But um, uh, I found that I, I needed to to establish something and set something up mm. that we're able to build upon. Um, and there's a um, there's a book, a bit of a classic called the E Myth, and mm-hmm. uh, what they talk about is that a lot of businesses um, fail not because of lack of inquiry or, or, or income, mm. but because of lack of systems. Mm-hmm. So what I wanted to do was create those systems of the things that I'd mentioned yeah. prior, and then start to build it. So yeah. uh, at first, I sort of didn't want to. I wanted to leave my marketing to that last system because mm-hmm. I wanted to ensure that. If and when I did create a marketing system that was successful, yeah. that I wasn't swamped with inquiry, mm-hmm. that I wasn't be able to, going to be able to keep up with because we didn't have those other systems in place. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure I had my you know, ducks in a row, as mm-hmm. it were, before I started marketing. Mm. Then, of course, because I was involved in a lot of that other stuff and you know, uh, you know, accepting things off Facebook with regards to, you know, or Instagram with regards to, you know, business, business development, yeah. I'm sure that's when I started to see Probably. and notice the um, biz video. Yeah. And, um, and uh, you say that I was open. Uh, well, you guys were local to me, which was great because mm. we could sit and have a face-to-face, which yeah. is important to me. Uh, and then um, and a lot of the things that we discussed when we sat down mm. really did line up with a lot of the business development that I was doing. Yeah. So rather than sort of being too guarded, I thought, well, listen, I'll just be open. I'll see yeah. what these guys have got to say. Yeah. Um, and then when we, you know, we, we had a discussion and a lot of the things that we were saying were mm. in line with what we were talking about. And I thought, yeah. well, you know, this is, this is sort of the direction that yeah. I want to head in. Yeah, perfect. What was it, do you think, that was um, the clincher or that was like, yep, this, there's enough validity here for me to go, let's either this is the best, this is the right decision, or at least it's enough to go, let's give us a go, what do you okay. that was? Um, the, the thing that I thought was a big a big point for me was I had seen a previous video that okay. you guys have created for a builder that was, you know, a builder still on the Gold Coast, yeah. but it was in a slightly different sector. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember watching that video and just thinking to myself, I don't know what I've just seen and why I like it so much, mm. But I want that guy to build my house, and mm. I'm a builder. <laughs> you know? and, I, yeah. and I and I and I knew that it was it was marketing. I yeah. knew that it wasn't because this guy was you know you know my best mate. Yeah. It was because I knew that that what had been created and what I had just watched um, had really sort of conveyed a message to me. Mm. And I remember thinking to myself, if these guys can do for me what they've done for that fella. Mm. Th- this is going to be great. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of why I guess it was sort of. I'd seen evidence that mm. it had worked yeah. because I had felt that connection with yeah, that guy, right. even though I'd never met him. Yeah. You know, and I thought that's that's fantastic. And that's if good. if Biz Video can do for me what they've done for him, yeah. well then I'm all ears. You yeah. know, so um, yeah, that's that was probably <laughs> that's probably what sold me <laughs> most of all. That's good feedback to hear that yeah. you watched it and you thought, I want this guy to build my house, and I'm it, a builder. <laughs> it was a bit like that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. Um, okay, and then you came on board and. Um, I don't know, we were, I mean, we're, we always love working with you, but at that stage when you came on board, just you being a bit different from the others we, we'd mm. um, spoken to was really exciting. Um, what were some of the, the things that you really enjoyed in that initial journey, like starting sure. to get, I mean, yeah, you go for it. Yeah, right, well, the, well, well, that's easy. Um, um, one of the things that I thought was, um, I thought, as we were going in there, mm. it, and I'm sure this is something that you hear a lot, a lot, yeah. and a, a lot of the a lot of the, um, the the discussion that we had was around finding my story, mm. and I thought, you know, I don't have a story. Mm. You know, I'm a guy who, you know, did his apprenticeship with his old man, got his builder's license, and became a builder. Mm. You know, that's boring. That's normal. You know, and I thought this isn't <laughs> this isn't exciting. Yeah. What I really liked was. Um, and again, this is what lined up with a lot of my business coaching and business, business development was actually looking inside and coming up with techniques about how to find what's important to me yep. as a builder. Yep. And 
I liked the way that, that you guys were able to, um, uh, I'm sure you gave it a name, our, our initial session. Mm -hmm. What do we call it? Story development session. So uh, during the story development session, what was interesting was that, you know, just simply with a few well sort of well worded questions, you were able to find out from me mm. what was important to me rather mm. than just saying, what do you want to tell the, you know, you know what yeah, do you want yeah. to tell your customers? By uh, you know, by having a bit of a you know, in that story development um, session, we were able to you know, pull out yeah. what was important and why that was important, mm. and I guess that was the key of finding of finding our story and yeah. finding why working, you know, why um, you know, what's important to us yeah. and what and what we want to convey. Greg, one thing I like you mentioned there or articulated there was um, how we helped you find your story, and you thought, you know, how are you going to do that? I don't have a story. I just did you know, did my trade, then I got my license and I've been building. Um, I think that's what a lot of builders have in their minds before they talk to us. Or that might be the reluctancy to why they would engage or just begin a conversation with us. But I like what you said there as well. It's, uh, it's not just about where you've come from. And that's a big thing we emphasize. It's also about where you're going and who, who you're becoming. Because when you share that story, then you start attracting people who go, yeah, your values align. Mm. The values that you're taking with you to go from here to there, that aligns. And we also want to go somewhere pretty similar. So let's, I want to, I want to, I want to do this with you, mm. whether it be a client or whether it be, you know, um, ideal staff that start seeing what you guys are creating. Interesting you say that um, mm. because what we, what we find, found in doing that mm. um, and a great way I found that something that stuck with me, which was a way to find out what was important to us mm. and why that was important to us, mm. is I was asked the question about when were you given a compliment that was good? Mm. And I said, oh, well, it was when a client told me that, you know, X, Y, Z. Yeah. And then, then the question was asked, well, why was that important? And I said, mm. oh, it just because it was good because uh, yeah, I liked it because I, it, it made me feel like that I'd done my job correctly. And yeah. I thought, well, you know, why was that important to you? And yeah. I, I got to thinking about why yeah. these things were important. And in doing that, with a few you know, well-worded questions, I was able mm. to say, you know what, what was important to me was surrounding myself with a team that, that was able to produce a product that everybody was happy with, but not only that, that the client enjoyed the process from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. Not just grit their teeth while the building was going on and getting a nice house mm. at the end of it, but was able to enjoy it. You know, enjoyed yeah. the selection process. Yeah. You know, liked working with a cabinet maker to to get their to get their kitchen exactly mm. as, as they liked it. So in doing that, finding our, our values, our core values within our business, yeah. what we found is that once we'd identified our core values, yeah we were able to relate that to our employees and our subcontractors. Wow. And we found that our subcontractors then, um, as we looked at them, we realized that the subcontractors that became our you know, juiced in contractors, the ones yeah. that we used for every job over and yeah. over again, we found that they really shared our core values. Wow. So we created, this, um, we created this group of subcontractors and employees that was just mm. a yeah, you know, sorry for being corny, but it was yeah. like a big family. Yeah. We were able to, you know, we all knew what everybody was doing. Yeah. And it made the construction of our projects that much easier because yeah. everybody was working together yeah. and it became a, a positive upward spiral. Yeah. Whereas, you know, we we're all working together and everybody knew what you know what everybody yeah. wanted and all the little bugs got ironed out and the subcontractors, you know, the same the 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 the, the same painters were following the plasterers, mm. so they were able to communicate and it just it was such a it was such a positive move mm. to identify what was important mm. and then relay that to our subcontractors and employees yeah. and then everybody's just heading in the same direction yeah, um, yeah. instead of fighting against each other it was so it was I'm really glad you raised move. that um, because I do hear that from a few of our, our clients where it it has a far greater ripple effect mm. than they initially thought you know mm. their their team are turning up earlier staying later taking on more responsibility willingly. Mm. Um, and they're able, I mean, one of our guys the other day said a massive win for him was a guy that he's been trying to get rid of for a year and a half. When he showed him the story for the first time and showed the team, the next day that guy gave me his letter of resignation. And he was like, that was a huge win. You know, I couldn't let this guy go because he was doing the work, but he just wasn't team. He didn't feel like family mm. and didn't want to be part of the family. Mm. Um, and it's, but apart from that, like we're not a silver bullet, mm. you know, you and a lot of our clients that, that, that see great success is because they put in hard work. 
when I mean, you plug us in, what are some of the other things that you did that were really effective, that made this partnership that much better? What I think this video did for us more than anything else is you guys started to create a little bit of consistency with our inquiry. Mm. So when we had consistency, I was able to then monitor that and start to come up with systems surrounding it. So mm. for example, when an inquiry comes in, the first thing I do is qualify that client. Yeah. So the you know, qualification is, um, do you want built what we want to build? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have the capability to pay for what we want to build? Yeah. Are you in the radius or the proximity mm. of where we want to build? Mm. So if that client gets qualified, then we try and book a meeting. Yep. We book a meeting. To, and so in doing that and having a bit of a consistency with our inquiry, I was able to look at some historical data mm. and start to tweak things about whether they were, you know, whether we needed to change things mm -hmm. or do more or do less or you know, how many people were, were we getting that were qualified. And it gave us the ability to start to, to, start to, to change our, our, um, our message mm. to try and find that exact, that ideal client that we were yeah. looking for. Namely, ideal client building, A, what we wanted to build mm -hmm. because we're able to create that system to build that very efficiently, right, yeah. and B, the particular client that we wanted to work with, yeah. be it a demographic, financially, age, yeah. you know, hobbies, whatever, yeah. we were able to find that particular person and work with them, you know, work with our ideal client. Yeah. You know? Maybe in your words would be best, I, mean, I might use jargon that doesn't resonate with some people. Um, how would you describe what Richard has helped set up, Richard and Brittany have helped set up for you guys mm. um, in terms of, because we help you with, with the ad side of things and then that, that journey that that prospect takes until you have a conversation with them, mm. in your words. So um, Brittany and Richard were able to um, find out what we wanted to build, mm -hmm. find out exactly, and then the type of client that was going to be best for us to work with, mm -hmm. and then target our message directly towards that client and find them specifically. Mm -hmm. So we could put our, our, um, our offer, our marketing material, mm -hmm. in front of that particular person. Yeah. Um, I'm not much of a writer, so you know, obviously using, using uh, Brittany and Richard to write copy was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to, they were able to find out exactly what we wanted to say and what we wanted to do yeah. and package it up and put it in that piece of marketing material so we could get it out to and yeah. put it out in front of our in front of our ideal client yeah it um yeah it was great perfect and they i mean they've also set up for you the um that sort of custom questionnaire for you guys so, you, so it comes to you with information on, on that client already? Yeah. So that's something that's happened of late, yeah. which has been a sensation. Yeah. We haven't really discussed that, but that's been fantastic. Yeah. So uh, originally what we would have is we'd have a client uh, come to us um, with an inquiry. Yeah. 99 times out of 100, that inquiry was, how much is this? Yeah. So we'd have, a, we'd have a sample product, like a, we'd have a sample of a, one of our second dwellings, a, a picture per yeah. se, and a floor plan. And uh, like, like I say, 99 times out of 100, how much does it cost to build mm, that? Mm. Which sure, they need to know, but I mean, in doing the market, in, in doing the area that we're doing, we also need to know some, some things Absolutely. first. We need to know what they want included in there. Yeah. We, want, we need to know the finishes. We need to know whether they have, for example, whether they have, um, uh, they're on town sewer mm. or they need a, their own system. Yeah. Um, so uh, Brittany and Richard created a, um, uh, short questionnaire, I guess you would say, yep. uh, that that triggers our clients to ask uh, to answer a few questions for us. Mm. That gives us the ability to qualify that that client a lot sooner mm -hmm. to find out whether that's something that you know somebody that we want to yeah, yeah. pursue, or whether it's not going to be suitable and they should find you know somebody that's you yeah. know, that services that market yeah. a little bit better than us. Um, and I would say that, that that sort of you know cut our inquiry our inquiry time down and our, our uh, administration time down dramatically simply because wow. of that one form. It okay. was it was great. Yeah, I know we did a lot of research into when we came up with that mm. uh, process system. Mm. Yeah, you can grow a business far better with the right systems in place, mm. um, like you said earlier. But I know the research going into that um, one thing that just kept standing out. Because you talk to all builders, and it's that that same frustration. Mm. People call me, and they go, well, "How much?" Mm. And I was like, "Man, there can't be that many 
those kind of people in it, like why is it so consistent and, and our research then just showed that I don't, I don't know if you want to say psychologically when, when someone lands or comes when they're looking they're in a, a bit of a research phase and they don't know mm. what they want they need your help to know what they want yeah and it's they go for it so what we found with the form mm. um the form that richard and um Brittany had created is it also gave me a lot of information from that client that when I called them, I was armed with I was armed with a lot of information, namely what's important to them and why it's yeah. important to them. For example, one of the questions that we have is just that: what are you looking for in a builder? Yeah. We get a lot of the similar answers, mm -hmm. but it gives me the ability that when I call them, I know what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Namely, they're looking for somebody who's reliable. They yeah, might be yeah. looking for honesty. They yeah. might be looking for uh, flexibility in plans. They might be looking for you know um, a, a, a locked-in time frame for a build. Yeah. So I'm able to sort of um, I'm able to custom, have the right conversation, with custom them. design my answers, and you yeah. know, and I'm I'm able to talk to that person as to exactly what they want. And if yeah. they're looking for um, you know, a fixed time frame. Well, then we can offer them that. You know, if they're looking for you know a completely fixed contract, well, we can offer them that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We can offer them that as well. I, I can I might know by that form that they they're really concerned with a builder not returning their phone calls or poor communication. So I know that I've just got to be nice and um, attentive and responsive to their inquiry. Mm. And all of a sudden, I'm head and shoulders above the next mm. builder who mm. takes three or four days to get back to them. You know, yeah, so wow. it's um. It's it's quite a it's quite a, it's quite a powerful tool yeah. I find yeah yeah wow that's awesome feedback mm. that's really yeah. good um, yeah. I'm glad we're recording this just so Rich and Brittany can can hear that um, that's a big thing we're trying to do is just get more feedback from our builders mm. and their wins to then pass it on to the team in the back end because mm. sometimes they don't hear that or see that mm -hmm. um, and yeah for you. Partnering with us, what's the what's one of the biggest things that you take away from it? The biggest benefit in partnering with Biz Video, I find, is that it's been um, even though I've mentioned it before, it's given me that consistency of inquiry mm. um, to be able to to be able to target our marketing to build what we want that's yeah. going to be um, that's going to be uh, a down our alley that's yeah. going to be qualified. Good qualified clientele yeah. that we can, you know, we can, you know, we can service mm. their needs. Mm. Um, so, once upon a time, when I was just hoping and waiting for referrals to yep. work, now I know that we've got a, you know, we've got a consistent stream of inquiry, mm -hmm. and of those inquiries, there's going to be, you know, a percentage that are going to be qualified. Yeah. So we're able to really, so the marketing. The marketing system of our business, yeah. I feel, is just taken care of. Yeah. You know, and it's it makes it it makes it um, it makes it a lot easier to focus on the other elements, mm -hmm. knowing that that inquiry is really just taken care of. Yeah, brilliant. Um, the the money, the investment versus the value output, tenfold. Tenfold. Um, the ability to say no. Uh, it, it's uh, it's made it a lot easier because I know what that client wants. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go out to their house and find out what they <laughs> what they want and waste all that time just yeah. to turn around and say it's not for me. Yeah. Um, time input versus value output. Um, uh, uh, Biz video handling my marketing means that I put very little time into it. I approve some um, I approve some marketing material. Once every month, yep. and that's it. <laughs> that's great. Um, if someone says to me, "What if I don't know what to say in the video?" Um, I find that we're, uh, the way that the system worked with me is it was simple as a conversation, yeah. uh, and that conversation was. Uh, I found that my responses were basically just created, and you know, it turned into an awesome video that. Yeah, you know, I didn't even really think about it. I was just yeah. really just having a conversation with somebody and answering questions. So it, it was really that simple. Great. Um, cool. What's the future with our partnership? 
Um, just strong into the future. I mean, I, I really don't see anything slowing down. Everything's working great. The system's just as it's supposed to be. So as my business develops and changes, then we'll you know, talk about other things as well. Brilliant. Um, what does it feel like to have your marketing taken care of? Uh, it's a, it's a um, you know, again, a bit cliched, but it's a sigh of relief. It yeah. just means that it's, I, I know that I know that inquiry's there. Yeah. I don't have to think about marketing. Yeah. I'm not sitting there wondering about what post I'm going to put on Facebook or whether I should use Google AdWords or whether yeah. I should you know, be sending out emails every three days or something like that. I just take a step back, yeah. concentrate on running the business. Yeah, perfect. Amazing. How does Biz Video help you nurture those uh, long-term prospects? Um, the beauty about um, the way that the, the system works that we're using, the Biz Video system works that we're using, is that if people are um, you know, lukewarm yeah. and just thinking about it, yeah. they can put in an inquiry. They'll see our marketing material for six months, 12 months, however long it is until they're ready to pull the trigger. Yeah. Then when they pull the trigger, they can give us an inquiry, we can follow it, and we know that they've sort of been following our process just by seeing it, um, you know, seeing it through their social media feeds or seeing it pop in through you know, um, marketing ads and what have you. Mm -hmm. We just know they're there. Um, in the background, seeing what we're doing yeah. until they're ready to contact us. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, what if someone says, what if I'm, af I'm afraid to ask clients to be on camera? Um, I wouldn't think that that's an issue. Um, mm. I find that uh, most people are receptive to it. Um, when you've got clients that you do a good job for and you establish a good relationship, uh, it's my experience that overwhelmingly People want to help you in small mm. business, mm. you know, and they're happy about it. And I find the biz video guys, uh, uh, you know, make make people more than comfortable. Mm. You know, they're, they're they're quite quite relaxed about it, and it's nothing more than a, a light conversation. Yeah. It's, it's simple. Is it all about inquiries and leads, or what about awareness? Yeah. So um, it, uh, inquiries and leads are great, uh, but the beauty about what we're doing is we're letting people know precisely what we do. So mm -hmm. awareness, yeah. people are aware of the type of business that we're running. Yeah. So rather than getting those inquiries that I was mentioning earlier in our conversations yeah. about God knows what, yeah. we find that people know what we're doing, they know our brand, yeah. they're, they're learning what, you know, our brand and they're sort of, you know, we're, we're positioning ourselves as you know, the, the premier second dwelling granny flat builder on the Gold Coast. Yeah. You know, so I think I think the messaging as a whole mm -hmm. has been been positive. Yeah, nothing but positive. Awesome, awesome. What was the initial feedback from those around you when we started creating those first stories? When we created our overview story, uh, I put it straight out to friends, family, yeah. you know, yeah, past clients, um, you know, uh, employees, everybody. Great. And instantly. Um, the feedback was just was just huge, just sort of saying, and I feel that those people um, got the effect that I got from that first video I watched from from mm. the other client, and the feedback I got was similar to what I felt. You know, just that it was Brilliant. it was fantastic, and that, yeah. that it was like, wow, we've you know, you've really, really, you know, we can see what you're doing. Yeah, that's exactly and, um, us. Yeah, and yeah. They're absolutely overwhelmed by you know by just sort of exactly what it was. Yeah. Amazing. Um, how long did it take to start seeing results? I've got to remember the date because it was important. It was something like November 19 mm -hmm. that the first video hit and we got our first inquiry on November 19. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I, remember, I, remember, I remember driving in the car yeah. and uh, I think Richard said, We're, you know, our ads are starting today <laughs> and the phone rang that day. Wow. And it was for somebody looking for a second, like for a granny flat. Yeah. And I just, I just, my jaw dropped. I just went, <laughs> this, this didn't come soon. This came yeah. instantly, yeah. Like absolutely instantly. Yeah. We keep a CRM, uh, we yeah. keep a, a client resource management, um, just, a, just a rudimentary uh, spreadsheet we've mm -hmm. kept ourselves. Yeah. And we saw the inquiry um, just, just turn on a dime. Mm. Absolutely, from from the end of November when we started, yeah, um, it just it's the inquiry just went to a level and just kept consistent. It was wow. perfect. I, I, I just remember thinking at the time, 
I think I made the right decision here. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of dubious business yeah. decisions. You know, some of them you question, some of them are right. I, I remember that day thinking, I think I got this one right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fantastic. Um, why is it important to be in front of your ideal market 24 seven? Um, <clears throat> it's important because I want people to be, to be inquiring to have things built that I want to build. Mm -hmm. And the reason that that's important is because I'm a b big believer in systemization mm -hmm. and it's very, very difficult to systemize your building system if you're running around doing all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. Whereas if people are building what you want to sell or, or, or what you want to build, mm -hmm. it's very easy to create a system mm -hmm. that you can improve upon. Mm -hmm. That to me, that is the key. So to be able to build something that, you know, you know, don't get me wrong, not everything works perfectly every time, but if you're duplicating that, then you're able to learn from the mistakes you made there mm -hmm. and build and, and put that into your system to ensure that that mistake doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take too long and all of a sudden, a lot of those, a lot of those mistakes have been ironed out. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're going from a renovation to a new to a duplex to a deck you know you're not you don't really have the sure you can next time you build a deck you can ensure you know you don't make that that mistake yeah but that could be you know who knows how far down the track whereas yeah. with these ideal client wanting what we're wanting to build yeah we're able to systemize it and make sure that it uh it works better next time why is marketing important to your business um we're following a bit of a theme here but um I find that marketing is essential because it gives me um, a consistency of inquiry mm -hmm. and that consistency of inquiry allows me to learn and systemize to be able to to be able to um, to be able to reject what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. By having a consistency of inquiry, I'm able to learn percentages of what I'm winning as mm -hmm. far as works go how many contracts I'm getting from how many inquiries. Mm. And from then, I can then better predict what my workflow is going to be. So I can, be I can better predict my business size. I can yeah. better predict my cash flow. I can, better, I, can better I can better predict the amount of staffing that I need. Yeah. Um, so to me, marketing's the, the key at the beginning. Mm. By getting marketing right, it sets a foundation to be able to learn mm. what you're going to need in the future. Mm. So in the beginning of this conversation, you said that you got, you got systems in place first and then you brought marketing in. Yep. Would you, now you've seen how it works, would you do it again or would you bring marketing in before those? Um, what I found with the um, uh, initial consultation with video, uh, with Biz Video, is I found actually that Biz Video um, helped me put those initial systems in place first. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, um, a lot of those, um, yeah, it wasn't just about the marketing. It mm. wasn't just about sending a message out to clients. Yeah. It was about helping with those systems and you know setting those systems up. Yeah. So as when the marketing did launch, I was able to sort of um, I was able to manage the inquiry that came in. So uh, yes, uh, I think those systems still have to be set up. But I also found that there's nothing wrong with coming in early, starting to establish your story mm -hmm. while while I'm putting those systems in place. Yeah, awesome. Um, and you mentioned earlier as well that you uh, having marketing working really well gives you the consistency of, of leads um, and, and qualified leads to then work through and you've got now got systems in place to handle everyone as it goes. It's better uh, project management, better cash flow, everything's smooth. On a big picture, when everything runs like that, what does that mean for Greg Kite? Um, it means... <laughs> It, it frees me up. Mm -hmm. um, it means that I can do, I can start to make more decisions with my time, mm -hmm. uh, whether that be start a little bit later, mm -hmm. um, leave a little bit earlier, whether I want to you know, take the family away, yeah. or it may also mean that when the, when the, the, the projects are running like they should, mm -hmm. um, it means that I can do more business development rather mm -hmm. than you know, running a project, yeah. which if I want, means I can grow my business or, or, or take advantage of a parallel system, for example. Um, it, it, it frees my time up to be able to, to be able to do, you know, probably be more efficient with my time. Yeah, amazing. That's good. Get the paddle in the morning, so. Yeah, nice. And more adventure races. That's it, more. Yeah. <laughs> Get to go to Cairns for a week. That's it.
Um, these ones are, are real quick, so one question, just one line answers. Um, we'll go as fast as we can. Um, someone says, I need to talk to my wife. Um, talk to her, but do it anyway. <laughs> um, I don't have the right team in place right now. Uh, I don't know why that's important. <laughs> um, my team is too small. No such thing as a team too small. Uh, I'm too old. If you're vertical, you're not too old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too young. Uh, best time to start. Uh, my business is too young. Uh, no such thing. Um, it costs too much. Uh, costs too much not to do it. Um, I've got too much going on. This is just another thing to add on. Um, no, it's going to free up your time, not add to it. Um, I'm not articulate. How does this video help with that? Um, you won't even know. Makes it makes it, it's such an organic conversation. It'll be easy. Mm. Um, I want to get my back end set up and perfect, polished, and then I'll do marketing. Mm, I wouldn't say perfect. I'd say make sure it's close. But this video will help with that. Um, I've tried videos. There's videos and the videos, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> there's building and there's building. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I have an apprentice, and I have an apprentice, and he does a bit of video. Him. No, it's it's about story development. It's not about it's not about you know holding a, an iPhone in front of somebody and answering a few questions. It's it's there's so much more to it than that. Um, uh, I'll wait till I get better projects. Uh, n no, th this is how you'll get better projects. Um, I'll take another look in six months. Um, it, there's no reason to do that. Start, I'd say, start looking at it now. Mm. Um, yeah, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be reaping the benefits in six yeah. months. Um, I'm too busy right now. Um, I've got work booked up for twelve months. Mm. Talk to me in twelve months. Um, you're going to free up your time, um, and you're going to do, uh, and it's going to increase the profits of the projects that you're doing. Oh, this one I heard from someone the other day. Um, I just moved offices, um, and this one's got better street frontage. Uh, I'll just do that. I found that we were attracting our, our ideal clients, not just somebody passing by that saw that we were builders. They were inquiring to get built exactly what our business was set up to build. Mm, that's important. Mm. If you love that conversation that Greg and I just had, um, fantastic. We'd love to hear from you. Any questions, anything you wish we'd discuss more of or anything like that. Otherwise, there are some more interviews below. Check them out and uh, let's have a chat.